Hey everybody, welcome back to another adventure story. My last video I was talking about my time living in Washington State, getting to learn how to be a helicopter pilot, having lots of great adventures flying helicopters through the mountains and landing in little hover holes in the forest and landing on pinnacles and on top of buildings and between buildings and taking the family with and we had a great time out there but eventually the rain kind of got to us and we wanted to move to sunnier places and I was going to continue my helicopter education uh, here in Denver area so we had another new baby that had been born in Washington at home uh, Nitsana and so the four of us decided to move back to Denver area. I found uh, a flight school here in the Broomfield Airport. So I got to kind of break down what it what it means to be a helicopter pilot and how that works in America. So the, the only way to sort of make it as a helicopter pilot is you have to get like a certain amount of hours. Uh, same with the fixed wing guys, but with helicopters, it's very expensive and it's uh, it's a very hard niche thing to get into. So the only way to, to get your 1,000 hours of turbine time, about 3,000 hours of total time, which is sort of the magic number of where you can get jobs that are actually gonna pay the bills with the family, uh, to get that, you have to become a flight instructor. It's the only thing where insurance will allow you to, to fly with such low time. So I was sort of gunning for a flight instructor job at the Broomfield Airport. And as I got involved with that, uh, I, I got my last rating. It was a high altitude rating to be able to fly the R44. It's a little bit more powerful of a machine uh, to be able to fly out here in Denver area. Started volunteering my time working as a flight instructor and, and kind of trying to, to get in with these guys so that I could start working as a flight instructor. But during this process, I was starting to realize that uh, the flying helicopters was maybe not going to be a good gig for us. Uh, I realized, like, yes, we could move to these different remote camps, but all these remote camps, uh, as I started started talking to other pilots, they weren't really designed for families, uh, and you really couldn't afford it. I was looking at probably the next 10 years of life of, of not getting paid basically anything to be to, to get these hours required before I could actually get like an actual you know flight for life or firefighting type of job uh, it was going to be a long process of, of not getting paid anything to to be able to get to the those hours requirements and I was also realizing just how procedural and and actually believe it or not kind of boring <laughs> flying helicopters at least the the instrument type of stuff uh, was getting for me and I was just realizing like man what an unfortunate thing like I'd spent all this money and time to become a pilot and realizing like it wasn't going to pan out and and even as I think about it now it's one of the biggest frustrations in life for me is is realizing like all the time and money that I'd, and energy that I'd spent becoming a helicopter pilot and realizing like it's probably not going to be a good fit for me and especially for the family. So after about a year of volunteering my time and, and getting my last rating at uh, at the flight school, I, I let them know like I, I don't think this is going to work. And, you know, even to this day, I, I wonder, like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I mean, we could maybe buy a helicopter someday. I, I have no idea how this is going to apply to life someday. And I, I hope that I can use it for something in the future. But at, at the moment, I have no idea how this could actually pan out to something that's that's usable for life. I continued on working at DirecTV. Uh, this lasted for another couple of years or so. Satellite television was starting to kind of trend down. This is becoming less and less popular, and they were getting a little bit more desperate. They were starting to require us to all do... Uh, you know, a little bit more sales, and they were getting so desperate for this, they were kind of wanting us to do these shady sales tactics. But I was kind of realizing, like, this was not going to be a sustainable career for much longer. And this started a long process of, of trying to figure out uh, what type of career I was going to do, and this sort of uh, has continued on to this day. And it's been, a, it's been a big frustration for me, just, you know, floating from one career to the next and just trying to find something that works. From there, I decided to, to try to get back into the trades. Uh, I joined the uh, Electrical Workers Union and started working to uh, to become a journeyman lineman, work on the big, uh, the big electrical towers and things like that. But realized soon that I, I really don't jive working on crews too much. I, I, I like working on my own. That's kind of why, why it worked at DirecTV. So that that only lasted for a little bit. But part of the advantage of working for the, the IBEW is they helped me get my, um, my CDL. So after working a couple of gigs with these guys, one of them I was uh, working on the light rail, building these big uh, electrical towers on the light rails. And another one I was doing dirt work, uh, operating loaders and trenchers and things like that. 
Uh, they helped me get my CDL, and I, I decided I was going to continue on with the, the CDL, the truck driving thing. And that's what I'm doing up to this day. So besides working for companies, we've also kind of done a lot of work on our houses. Uh, as soon as we got our little house up here in Coal Creek, we immediately started flipping it. And at this point, we finally just uh, completed the renovation on it. We've spent a lot of time... <laughs> converting this into this cute little cabin this is all kind of nicole's brainchild she, she's been uh working as an as an architect designer this whole time just you know designing just crazy things uh having different log work and rock work and the, the design of the showers and the bathrooms and it's been quite the project to to finally complete as actually just about six months ago that i finally uh, put the finishing touches on our master bathroom. And besides that, we had our own little adventure living <laughs> living in our shed. So we we decided uh, Airbnb was just started starting to trend up as as sort of a popular thing. And Nicole devised this idea that we could move into our shed and then convert that into an Airbnb. Though we didn't have that idea at first, but what we wanted to do was to to rent out our main house as an Airbnb, and we had gotten enough construction done on it that we were going to be able to close off a couple of bedrooms and uh, still rent the place out as as a great Airbnb. And that was quite a successful thing. And the four of us moved into our tiny little, I think it's a 12 by 16 storage shed. And uh, throughout the next year and a half, we actually lived in this shed uh, between that and a camper that I set up. And we spent all, a whole bunch of time. I actually quit my work, working as a mixer driver, and we converted this shed into what is now this really fun little uh, tiny house slash cabin. Uh, and it was quite the process. It, it was kind of a, it developed in stages. We weren't really sure what it was going to be. Like it just needed to be a place that was going to be livable for us. And we didn't know where this was going. So at first we just kind of fixed up the main, uh, the main part of the shed and it, it had been like a tree fort. There was a little bridge going to a zip line. It was a fun little kid hangout. And we, we built this loft and put a shower in and you know ran, had water electricity and all that stuff out there we made it this cute little place but we quickly found out you know fam growing family of four was not going to fit in a 12 by 16 shed for long so I eventually uh, cut out the wall and I learned how to do uh, how to do log work uh, started collecting trees from the forests uh, around our neighborhood and kind of watched some YouTube videos about how to build a log cabin. And we abutted this log cabin basically into the side of the shed. And I, I stacked the logs up and learned how to build a log cabin and had the draw knife. I sort of made my own Alaskan mill with my chainsaw and a couple of straight 2x16s and learned all sorts of really interesting uh, construction techniques of how to build a log cabin. And uh, <laughs> over the process of a, of a year and a half, we converted our, our tiny little storage shed into this beautiful log cabin. But anyways, did end up succeeding in this. I had had to quit my other job. Uh, in order to, to make income, we'd been uh, renting out our main house on Airbnb, and we were able to almost pay the bills. Uh, during this process, I also started working as a climbing guide. This was also through Airbnb, through a platform they call Experiences. And this is uh, sort of an, an idea that Nicole had come up with. And this was actually very successful. So for two summers, the, the two summers that we lived in this little shed as we were converting it into a cabin... Uh, I worked as one of probably one of the most successful climbing guides in the Boulder area. I became pretty high profile. Some of the uh, some of the other guiding companies in the area. I remember a couple of guys getting like really jealous and and wondering how I was being so successful. I remember the the big guiding company out here actually like copying my uh, my sales pitch on on my main web page and they like word for word basically like plagiarized what I had said to be able to get more clients of their own. So that was ridiculous. That lasted for a couple of years. And then I think Airbnb started realizing that, uh, you know, like what some of us were doing and, and they, they wanted us to start providing our own insurance instead of providing insurance for us. And as soon as they did that, it was not going to be affordable for us anymore. So I sort of had to quit that gig. A lot of times Nicole would come with 
and uh, helped me out with the guiding. But it sort of put in my mind like how much I enjoyed guiding. Still not really uh, affordable to to pay for a family, but I'm I'm looking at doing this as kind of maybe a volunteer gig. But that's something that's still in process right now. And then after the our little tiny house log cabin was built, and I was sort of. Uh, wrapping up the whole guiding thing we moved back into our main house and started airbnb out this uh our little cabin pretty psyched to have uh, both our house and our little tiny house as these two kind of beautiful little constructions uh using you know quartz rocks and logs from our neighborhood and it's been a very satisfying project to have completed and that kind of brings us up to date with where we're at with the work side of things uh, on my next video i'd like to talk about some of my favorite adventures that i've had with my family in this last 10 years that we've been living here in Colorado, we've taken trips to Yosemite and Moab and uh, just lots of different climbing trips uh, here around Colorado. So I'll talk about some of those on the next video. Thanks.